In the shadow of one of the giants of the food industry, a murky and chilling reality is hidden that few dare to mention. Nestle is a company founded by a young German chemist named Henry, who had the dream of solving a problem that occurred in his time, poor nutrition and infections in children at an early age. But what this young pharmacist never imagined was that his dream would end in a company that hides in its history hundreds of deaths due to its absurd lies, exploitation of natural resources and violations of labor rights in underdeveloped countries. The murky past of Nestle reveals a sad and heartbreaking panorama, deception, abuse of power, and an insatiable appetite for money. While consumers enjoy their products, thousands of people in disadvantaged countries suffer the consequences of this gigantic multinational. Let's delve into the depths of this dark history. Let's discover the secrets hidden behind chocolates, cereals, coffees, ice creams, and many other products. It is time to open our eyes and face the harsh reality that is hidden behind the facade of this powerful company, Nestle. Chapter 1. Origins of Nestle Henry Nestle was born on August 10, 1814 in Frankfurt, Germany. His parents were Anna Maria Katharina Eichmann and Johann Ulrich Matthias Nestle. He was part of a large family of 14 children, occupying the 11th place. His father Johann was in charge of the business of the family inheritance. He was a glassmaker and this business provided them with a good source of income. At the beginning of the 19th century, chemistry was not considered a science, so it was not something that could be learned at university. The pharmacists of the time obtained their education mainly in academic courses and training. Once this training was completed, the next step was to put into practice everything they had learned. This could be at home or abroad. As Henry was a lover of chemistry, he decided to move to Switzerland to complete his practice as a pharmacist, which ended in 1833. Six years later, he became an assistant pharmacist. This authorized him officially to be able to perform chemical experiments and sell drugs. In 1843, Henry was not a wealthy man, but he managed to get financing and bought a property in Veve. This property included a house next to an oil mill, a press, a sawmill, a distillery, sheds, a garden, and many other things. Here is where he started the process of manufacturing some products such as vinegar and fruit spirits. He even bought some vineyards to produce grapes and used them in the process of making vinegar. Henry and his wife Clementine had noticed that at that time infant nutrition was really a difficult problem to address, and it was impossible to find substitute foods for babies. Mothers fed their babies with milk from different animals because their babies did not like breast milk or were allergic. Added to that there were also very poor hygienic conditions that endangered the health of the baby. Henry wanted to solve these problems and saw the urgent need to create processed foods. One child out of every three died from the lack of good quality infant food substitutes. Finally, in 1865, Nestle developed the first food for babies. The product was a combination of milk paste and sugar. However, shortly afterwards he admitted that it was not suitable for daily use and removed the milk paste from the mix. By 1867, he had already invented and produced some powdered dairy products. The infant cereal began to combine cow's milk with sugar and cereals such as wheat and rice. In this way, he created a product that became a substitute for breast milk. At the age of 50, he had a prosperous business that was also approved by doctors and professionals in maternal care. He had a great popularity in several countries such as Norway, United States, Great Britain, Germany, and Spain. Chapter 2. The Killer Formula the creation of the milk flour was the beginning and the inspiration of the great company of Henry Nestle. As the years went by, he expanded his product line and joined forces with Peter Kaler Kohler, who with years of effort managed to find the perfect formula for milk chocolate in 1875. And added to that, another success would knock on the doors of the company forged by Nestle. In 1938, the famous and popular Nescafe was invented, which quickly became recognized worldwide as the preferred coffee of the American Armed Forces during World War II. After a great period of expansion and at the age of 61, his wife Anna Clementine had many health problems. This led Henry to make the decision to retire and sell his company. 
The new owners who took over Nestle had big plans to expand and in 1905 they merged with a rival company that sold similar products called Anglo-Swiss Condensed Milk Company. Together they became known as the Nestle Group. By joining all their resources instead of competing, they were able to more easily dominate the market and expand their product lines. Sales seemed to be declining and the Nestle Group became even more greedy. They needed to get the most popular formula of the company to all the babies in the world in order to generate the greatest possible profit. The company would make a master move, but at the same time it would show itself to everyone's eyes. In the early 1970s, concern from doctors and nutritionists increased considerably in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Cases of malnutrition in very small babies who were being fed with breast milk replacement were becoming more frequent. What alarmed the specialist was not malnutrition as such, since that was a problem that had been dragging on for years. The new disturbing factor was poor nutrition and infection reflected now in more babies. They came to the conclusion that the cause of this problem could be related to the fact that babies were being fed with powdered milk prepared under poor hygienic conditions. It was detected that in many cases the bottles in which they packaged the preparation were not clean enough. Sterilizing them properly was complicated if they did not have the necessary resources. In other cases, it was the water that was not drinkable or did not have the level of hygiene necessary to not sicken a newborn. The lack of education and illiteracy also presented themselves as a risk factor. As mothers could not read the instructions, they often diluted the powder in a much larger amount of water than necessary. And the babies were left hungry. As a result of this, many babies ended up in the hospital for malnutrition and dehydration. Here is when the question arises, if this turned out to be such a serious problem, why did mothers continue to feed their babies with this formula? Accusations were made about agreements with hospitals in which the company had trained nurses who recommended mothers to feed their children with powdered milk. Nestle began to pay doctors and hospitals to sell their formula asking them to tell mothers that it was better to use Nestle's formula than to breastfeed naturally. The company hired fake nurses in charge of delivering free samples of the product to mothers, so that when those samples ran out, the mothers would no longer be producing milk naturally, and thus they would have no choice but to pay for the expensive product of Nestle to keep their children alive. Although for the company this strategy had extraordinary results, the consequences of these actions were a great international scandal. It is estimated that millions of babies died or suffered a serious deficiency of essential nutrients. Chapter 3. The Water Crisis In 2005, Nestle CEO Peter Brabeck stated that water is not a human right and that it should be privatized. Words that the media criticized and then he came out to justify that it was not really what he meant and that anyone regardless of where they live, has the right to have clean and safe water to drink and clean themselves. But if we look at some actions taken by Nestle, we can see that what he was saying was real. In 2013, it was discovered that the company began to divert the consumption of clean water away from towns and cities in Pakistan and then began to bottle it in their factories and sell it to the population at a much higher price. The same thing happened when the company arrived in Paris, in the United States. They began to lower the water levels. This shortage caused people to be forced to buy bottled water from Nestle, which was nothing more than the water they had before Nestle started packaging it. In the United States, it was reported that Nestle pumped 747 liters of fresh water per minute from the reserves of the state of California. In total, the company owns more than 50 brands of bottled water, being these the most famous and consumed in the world. The company was also accused of using groundwater, that is, water from underground wells, instead of spring water as they claimed on their labels. It was also exposed that none of the eight springs that the company had met the standards of the American Drug Agency. Already in 2003, the company faced a class action lawsuit that ended in a settlement of $12 million where they also affirmed that the water came from wells and not from springs. Chapter 4. Exploitation and Controversies of Nestle It is everywhere, from water to nutrition and health products. However, have you ever wondered how many hands your chocolate bar or cereal you eat daily has gone through? The truth is that we hardly ever think about it. 
Nestle is accused of having exercised forced labor and child exploitation in cocoa farms. This information did not come to light until 2000, when it was made public through a report that incriminated the company, emphasizing that the food giant was fully aware of the deplorable conditions in which children worked. The company set out to end forced labor by 2005. However, everything was left to nothing. That same year, the International Labor Rights Fund sued, among other companies, Nestle, alleging that three children represented by this entity were illegally trafficked from Mali to Ivory Coast. They also claimed that children suffered poor physical conditions. Nestle's response was that it was impossible for them to verify the entire manufacturing process. Another situation that left the company in a bad position was against the government of Ethiopia in 2002, as the multinational demanded $6 million from the government of one of the poorest countries on the planet. It seems that during the 1970s, the military regime of the nation confiscated all the assets of foreign companies and nationalized them. Later, those assets were bought by Nestle with the pretext that all those assets that the African state confiscated currently belonged to Nestle. The country would be in debt with them. Although justice somehow backed Nestle's claim, they were in a very untimely time, as the nation was being threatened by a famine that could have ended the lives of more than 15 million inhabitants. With the money that the company demanded, potable water could have been provided to a large part of the population. Despite the knowledge of the situation and the large sales records of Nestle, this remained firm with the complaint. Being realistic, $6 million were nothing for Nestle. The media echoed this and the population began their boycott threat, which forced the multinational to give in. Finally, the debt was settled for less than half of what they asked for in the first place, and they also promised to invest in the local economy. If you think that Nestle's controversies end here, you are very wrong. For example, in 2007 Purina, one of Nestle's brands, was accused of selling contaminated food for pets. These products had to be withdrawn from the market and recorded cases of illness and even deaths of different animals. Throughout its history, the company has had many accusations, but they have managed to forge their economy and diversify their products, which despite the boycott threats from certain social sectors is impossible to be affected. The company is so big and they have such a variety of products that are around the world that when you go to a supermarket and buy any product it is possible that it is owned by Nestle. It is incredible that Henry Nestle founded the company for a good cause, with the noble intention of helping to solve problems of nutrition and health in children. But solid growth and malicious alliances displace this purpose to make more and more money regardless of cost. Did you know all these controversies about Nestle? If you have been left wanting more stories, just click on this video. I hope to see you here. Remember to subscribe and like. Dream big and see you next time.